Uh, happy New Year, and uh, thank you for attending the January 7th, 2021 Town Council meeting. I'm Acting Chairman Dawn Cantapio. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7.33 p.m. Um, we will begin with a moment of silence, and I'd like First Selectman Tesoro, do you have a few words to say this evening? I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a lot of feedback. Do you hear, does everyone hear me? Yes, okay. The episode yesterday in Washington, D.C., DC, where the symbol of our democracy, the Capitol building, was desecrated by an unruly mob was both unsettling and an opportunity. It is unsettling because it is an extreme example of the division in our nation and the extent to which a small number of people will put their personal point of view ahead of the greater good. Like all Americans of goodwill, we in Trumbull know that violence is never justified. We know that the symbols of our democracy act as a unifying force, no matter our political persu persuasion or our point of view. An attack on these symbols, no matter who does it, is an attack on all of us. This is also an opportunity to step back and think rationally about what our politics should be. Character assassination, questioning people's motives and incivility should have no place in our politics. Unfortunately, that has not been the case and it needs to stop. Let's all recommit to respecting one another's point of view, disagreeing civilly and making arguments that are fact-based. When our point of view wins, we should be gracious winners. When our point of view does not win, we should be both gracious and committed to doing better. If we do that, we can use the awful situation of yesterday to make a better tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, First Selectman Tesoro. Um, and before we have uh, the moment of silence, I ask that we remember Stephen Wright, former Board of Ed Chairman from 2003 to 2013. He also served on the State Board of Education for nearly 10 years. Also, Joe Schlee, Schlee who passed away on 1228 at the age of 93. He was a former member of our Board of Finance. Please keep those uh, who are suffering from COVID in our thoughts, and may we have calm during this time of transition at the Capitol and for our country. Thank you. I'd like to have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Don Cantapio. Here. Bill Mecca. Here. Michael Miller. Here. Donna Sedell. Mary Isaac. Here. Tony Sinto. Here. Carol Hans. Here. Kevin Shively. Here. Thomas Whitmore. Here. Jason Marsh. Here. Carl Massaro. Here. Eric Paulson. Here. Lori Rosasco Schwartz. Here. Joanne Glasser Ornstein. Here. Steve Lemoyne. Here. Bruce Elstein. Here. Joy Colon. Ashley Gaudiano. Here. And Lisa Valente. Here. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone here from the public for public comment this evening? If there's somebody who'd like to speak, a resident, uh, please raise your hand by um, indicating the raise, clicking the raise hand button or pressing star nine on your phone. It doesn't look like there's anybody who wishes to speak. Okay, then we'll move on to approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from December? 
So moved. This is Ashley Gadiano. And a second. Second, Jason Moore. Okay, Jason Moore. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none. See anyone? Um, can we have approval of a unanimous consent? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, we have a discussion item on the agenda this evening from the police station committee update. <coughs> I believe Angelo Magliocco is here tonight. Right here. Okay. And is Assistant yes. Chief Burns also with you this evening? Yes, he's yes. on. Yes, I am. Okay. okay. Thank you both for attending. Um, would you like to proceed with your update? Sure. Uh, thank first, thank you for uh, letting us go uh, early in the meeting. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is uh, Angelo Magliocco. I am the chairman of the Police Building Committee. I have been a police commissioner for the past five years, serving as both chairman and vice chairman. I took over this role for Lisa LaBella, who moved out of town and was unable to continue with her duties. Lisa was a tremendous asset to the town in her dedication to this committee, which has been almost three years now in the makes. She was instrumental in getting this done and very sad to see her leave. Uh, and one of the last times that she had presented at town council, we were going to present when we completed the project. Unfortunately, the project is not completed and we are close to being under completion, but it's not there. So we figured we'd give you guys an update. For the new council members, I'm going to give a brief project review so everybody knows what's going on. Back in 2017, the police department realized that we had a need for locker rooms, cell block renovations, and firing range and ventilation system. Uh, at that time, we were looking at doing three independent projects. Uh, in 2018, we decided that it would be better to lump the projects into one and form a committee. So in 2018, we did some project planning. Uh, part of that was going out to bid for an architect, which we did, and we hired Brian Humes. Then we also got the project approvals from the Board of Finance and the Town Council. So in that process, we came up with a bid, a bid sheet and a bid spec for prospective bidders, which we put out to bid, and we had received three bids, and we chose Bismarck Construction to do the bidding. Uh, so in early 2019, we had chosen Bismarck and they began work in May with the assumption that the completion would be done in 2019. By November of 2019, we did have substantial completion. Yeah, however, we had approved some additional scope of work, such as the break room and surrounding areas with some of the leftover funding. That work continued through the winter and 2020 came along and COVID. So unfortunately with COVID, we were slowed down with build out for the new gym, the record storage, the break room, and the mechanical service uh, for the range targeting system. Some of this was due to us using the state on call bids to, for storage and furniture. So that took a little bit more time with COVID. Uh, that's why a little delay. So at this point, present day, and. I'm going too fast, please just let me know or if I'll answer any questions. We are almost complete. All the punch list items are done. Uh, Bismarck has been very responsive in taking care of anything that has come up, uh, which minimal, but you know, things that happen during construction, we are under budget. The last thing we are waiting for is a fence to uh, uh, enclose the ventilation system on the side of the building so the neighbors have a little bit of a buffer from the sound and the view of the new ventilation system. Uh, we are using, uh, with the help of George and Dimitri, the town low bid process for the fencing and the town has been helping us out on that end. Uh, unfortunately with COVID, you know, we're waiting on material. So we're hoping, I think uh, by January or February, we should be able to have that work complete. Uh, but again, we are under budget. It's just taking us a little longer to finish, a little bit due to COVID and a little bit due to the uh, waiting on defense material. 
Uh, and if there's any questions, uh, Glenn is along. He was very instrumental in attending. <laughs> Basically, he ran the show and he did a tremendous job in uh, keeping everything in order, taking care of the punch list, staying on top of uh, in the, the subcontractor, uh, Bismarck Construction. So if there's any questions, you know, either Glenn and I will be able to answer them as long as I see George is on the meeting as well. Uh, so that's that's the project update. Hopefully the next time I come before you, uh, we'll say that we're complete. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? Uh, hey, um, Dawn, this is Tony Sinto. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, how, what's the percentage on your change orders on the project? Well, Glenn, will you want to handle that? I, yeah, I do not have the, the figures. Uh, we did have Dan Martin was handling finances for the project and, and uh, tracking them very closely. Uh, because we had the benefit of all that help, uh, we really relied on him to uh, monitor that. And I would not calculate those, um, uh, those numbers in, uh, in any sense. Uh, I acted as the liaison for the police department, um, and I'll uh, take this opportunity to uh, just lend a, uh, a note of success uh, in that it's been uh, the work here at the police department has been very well received by all of the officers, and it's been... Um, it's been a welcome update for the building, uh, which has not been uh, not seen an improvement since uh, it was originally instructed over uh, constructed over 40 years ago. Um, so the facilities and the uh, work that was done here uh, have been a uh, wonderful improvement. Uh, I could also thank um, uh, Public Works Director for helping us get through these final uh, phases. And very soon, I look forward to coming back to you with a completion report. Um, also noting that we are well within budget. So I think that was the, uh, um, the best note I could bring along there. Um, but I apologize, I do not have uh, percentages on change orders. I think you're still muted, Tony. Oh, sorry. Now, Ed, thanks, when you get a chance, that'd be nice. That's all, thanks very much. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much for attending this evening. We appreciate the update and look forward to uh, a final report soon. Thank you. Thank and again, you. If, there's anything, if there's anything that you need, just let us know and we'll have it for the next uh, meeting. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Welcome. Okay, we will move on to new business. Um, the first one is the election, uh, election of a permanent chair. I need um, a motion. Madam, uh, Madam Vice Chair, I would, uh, this is Jason Marsh. I would uh, like to make a motion uh, that we nominate uh, Don Cantafio as the permanent chair of the town council. Do we have a second? I would enthusiastically. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I put it to a vote. Madam Chair? Yes. Was that Tom Whitmore? He cut out a slight bit. I believe it was. Uh, Councilman Shively. Shively, thank you very much. Kevin Shively, yeah, made them yeah, second. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Dan Shopik. Uh, I believe you need to ask if there are any other nominations. Okay. Then at this time, I'd like to know if there are any other nominations on the floor. Hearing none. Is there any discussion? Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd like to call a roll call vote. Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sedell? Yes. Thank you. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? Yes. Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? Yes. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Vizosko Schwartz? Yes. Joanne Glasser Morenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? Yes. Bruce Elstein? 
Yes. Joy Colon. Oh, I'm sorry, she's absent. Ashley Gaudiano. Yes. And Lisa Valente. Yes. Very good, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. I appreciate the vote of confidence. Um, second item is election of a permanent vice chairman. Yes, this is Ashley Gaudiano. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Tom Whitmoyer as permanent vice chair. Uh, this is Eric Paulson and I will second that. Okay. Are there any further nominations on the floor? Any further discussion? Okay. I'd like to call a roll call vote from the clerk, please. Bill Mecca. Yes. Michael Miller. Yes. Donna Sadell. Yes. Mary Isaac. Yes. Tony Sinto. Yes. Carol Hans. Yes. Kevin Shively. Yes. Thomas Whitmore. Maybe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jake, sorry. <laughs> Jason Marsh. Yes. Carol Carl Massaro. Yes. Eric Paulson. Yes. Lori Zasko Schwartz. Yes. Julia Glasser Orenstein. Yes. Eva Moyne. Yes. Bruce Elside. Yes. Joy Colon. And she's absent again. <laughs> Ashley Gaudiano. Yes, it helps me, Margaret. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa Valente. Yes. Congratulations, Vice Chairman Whitmore. Thank you. Okay. Thank you we'll very much, to, all. We'll move on to the resolutions. Um, Councilman Mecca, will you please bring resolution TC 28-130 to the floor, please? <clears throat> yes, Madam Chair. Resolution TC 28-130, be it resolved that Nicole Satin of 51 Briarwood Terrace, B and the same, is hereby designated as the District 2 Democratic Town Council representative for a term extending to the first Monday of December 2021. Democrats only vote, by the way. Can we have a second? Second, Jason Marsh. Okay. And can we, uh, any discussion? And can we pass this by unanimous consent by the Democrats? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Joanne, uh, no, Councilman. Madam I'm sorry. Chair, excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh, I would you like want to, to swear in? Yes, I'd like to swear in Ms. Satin. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Certainly. Let me see if I can find her on my screen. There you are. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States? the Constitution of the State of Connecticut and the Charter of the Town of Trumbull, so long as you remain a citizen thereof, and that you will faithfully discharge according to law, the duties of the Office of Town Council for the term of January 7th, 2021, extending to December 6th, 2021, to the best of your ability, so help you God. I do. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Congratulations, welcome. Thank you. And um, Councilman uh, Glasser Ornstein, would you bring resolution TC 28 131 to the floor, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Resolution TC 28 131, be it resolved that Patricia Borgeson of 11 Scatter Good Circle be in the same is hereby designated as the District 4 Democratic Town Council representative for a term extending to the first Monday of December 2021. Democrats only vote. And can we have a second? Second, Ashley Gadiano. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, can we have a unanimous, a unanimous vote on this as well to accept the nomination? Yes, okay. And um, First Selectman Tesoro, would you like to swear in our new member? I will do that. Okay. And I see Pat. Congratulations. 
Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of Connecticut, and the charter of the town of Trumbull, so long as you remain a citizen thereof, and that you will faithfully discharge according to law the duties of the Office of Town Council for the term of January 7th, 2021, extending to Dece December 6, 2021, to the best of your ability, so help you God. I do. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations to our new chair, Chairman Thank you. Chairwoman Cantafio, and to our new vice chair, Tom Whitmore. Thank you. Councilman Mazar, would you bring resolution TC 28 132 to the floor, please? Certainly, Madam Chair, as soon as I can. What up here? Resolution TC 28 132. Be it resolved that resolution TC 28 126, adopted on December 7th, 2020 is hereby repealed and that the Trumbull Town Council hereby acknowledges the submission of the letter of application to the Connecticut Department of Housing and subsequently accepts the CDG Small Cities COVID-19 funding in the amount of $100,000. And Vicki A. Tesoro for Selectman is hereby identified as the individual authorized to sign the application, assistance agreement, and all subsequent amendments, reports, and related documents in order to administer and implement the project. There'll be a public hearing shortly. Full resolution is attached to the agenda. Thank you. And can we have a second, please? Second, Jason Marsh. Thank you. Um, can we have a committee report, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Attorney Shopik explained the resolution was passed last month, but the required public hearing wasn't held. This resolution will repeal last month's resolution and adopt resolution TC 28-132 with the required public hearing held at the full council meeting. Uh, vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. And I believe we have to have a public hearing. So I'd like to open up uh, this meeting to the public at 7.56 p.m. Anyone wishing to comment on this resolution? Well, just once again, if there's a member of the public who would like to speak, just press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen or star nine on your phone. And we have somebody, Mr. Marcus, and I'll bring him in. Okay, thank you. Mr. Marcus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Or am I muted? We can hear you. Okay. Can you, can you please state your name and your address, please, for the record? Yes. Thank you. Marsh, Marshall Marcus, 91 Stonehouse Road. I am a member of both the Economic and Community Development Commission and our Long-Term Emergency Response Committee. And this uh, grant application plan has come through the long-term response committee. And when we first found out about this money, small city money that was available, it was very restricted because for some reason they decided to put COVID response money through housing and urban development. And we were able to craft a solution to address both food stability as well as economic development to our restaurants that are hurting during COVID in order to keep employment up and keep the money in the small businesses here in Trumbull. I would like to really commend our economic development uh, chair, uh, Rena Backlar for the town, uh, Michelle Jacob from our uh, senior services and the way this was crafted, the final drafts of the application. And we had a Zoom meeting today with restaurants that are signing on, waiting for the contract to be signed. And 
ready to launch this project. They're very excited about the project that will aid those who have food instability. This is not the same as the typical users of the food banks. These are people who are affected by COVID, unsafe to go out to restaurants, to shop, things like that, that will give them some opportunities uh, to avail themselves of what our restaurants have to offer at the same time, giving a, an economic lifeline to some of our restaurants as we go into winter, especially when there is less outdoor dining taking place. So I'm very excited about this program and I think it may become a model for other towns going forward. That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Marcus. Any other comments from the public? Anything? No? Okay. Thank you. And we'd like to close the public comment at 7.59 p.m. Any further discussion? Madam Chair, if I could? Yes. I'd just like the, the council to know and anyone who's watching this meeting that this was a plan that was developed by our Economic and Community Development Director, Rena Bacalar. This was nothing that was, um, you know, a, a plan that was, you know, found in a book somewhere. She actually created it. Uh, and I think it's something that will help, obviously help our residents and help our restaurants at the same time. So I just want you all to know that, um, you know, what Rena has uh, proposed and what she actually wrote the grant and, and we we're gonna receive $100,000 from the state. Uh, so I think it uh, should be celebrated here this evening. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bacalar, do you wanna comment at all on this? I just wanna thank everybody for their support. Um, I was so pleased today uh, when we met with our restaurants at how excited they were. And I just want everybody to know what great department heads we have in town government. They're so supportive. We work together now as a team. Um, we're all just rolling up our sleeves to see what it is we can do. So I wanna echo Marshall's comments that um, Michelle Jacob and Dan Martin, who's our deputy finance director are my two uh, wing people, so to speak, in terms of the implementation. And I just wanna give Marshall a shout out because it was him at our long-term recovery committee that seeded the idea because I was very frustrated that the state had disallowed the use economic development uses for this funding. So we were able to find a way around it and craft a program that I think our restaurants were actually excited about today because we tried to craft it in a way that wasn't onerous for them, that would serve people in the community and they felt really excited about it. We also had some other, we have some other cool things coming for them too. So we we're able to share that. So I just wanna thank everybody for their support. Um, and I want you to know how well um, we all work together and that makes doing things like this much easier. So Marshall made another comment and I'll end here. And he said that, you know, this could be an example for other communities. And, I, and that was told to us by the Department of Housing and I do believe if this goes well, and if they have any leftover funding, that we could approach them again for more money. So, you know, these are the kinds of things when we all work together and we're, we're looking to just make a difference that can happen in our town. So thank you all. And thank you, uh, Vicki, and thank you, Marshall. Thank you. That's a great thing for our community. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'd like to know if we can call this by uh, approval by unanimous consent. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I believe this needs to be emergency legislation. So I make a motion that it be so. Thank you. Do we have a second? Thank you. And again, can we approve this with unanimous consent? Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilman Isaac, will you bring resolution TC28-133 to the floor, please? Yes, resolution TC28-133, be it resolved that Vincent De Janeiro of 91 Deer Run Drive <clears throat> be in the same as hereby reappointed as an alternate member of the Board of Finance for a term extending to the first Monday of December, 2023. Okay. Do we have a second? 
Pat Pork is on second. Thank you. And committee report, please. Uh, Vincent De Janeiro of 91 Deer Run Drive was present and indicated his party affiliation as unaffiliated. He was appointed to the board in 2011. He enjoys contributing to the community and looks forward to two more years of service. Vote, motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, can we pass this with unanimous consent? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilman uh, Lemoyne, will you please bring resolution TC 28-134 to the floor, please? Certainly. Resolution TC 28-134, be it resolved that the appointment by the first selectman of Anthony Cicciaglione of 18 Fieldstone Court as a member of the Golf Course Commission for a term extending to the first Monday of December, 2023, be in the same is hereby approved. Thank you. And do we have a second? Second, Jason Marsh. Thank you. Committee report, please. Tony of 18 Fieldstone Court was present and indicated his party affiliation as Republican. He worked at Tashua Knowles in 1976 and has been in electrical work for many years. He will be retiring June 1, 2021. He has always volunteered in football. With the presidential state officials, he has experience with $2 million budgets and enjoys playing golf at Tashua Knowles. He would like to give back to the community. Vote, motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, I'd like to know if we can approve this with unanimous consent as well. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, this is Tony. I just want to thank yes. you for the opportunity and I look forward to serving the community as well. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your uh, willingness to serve our community. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Councilman Hans, will you please bring resolution TC 28-135 to the floor, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Resolution TC 28-135. Be it resolved that the reappointment by first selectman of Jennifer Soma of 9 Twitch Brass Road as a member of the Land Acquisition Committee for a term extending to the first Monday of December 2025. Be and the same is hereby approved. Thank you. May I have a second, please? My I'm is on second. Thank you. Committee report, please. Jennifer Summer of Nine Twitch Grass Road was present and indicated her party affiliation as Democrat. First Selectman Tesoro had asked her to serve a couple of years ago. She has been a resident for 16 years and has four children. She enjoys giving back to the community. Vote, motion carried by unanimous consent. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, can we pass this by unanimous consent? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Guardiana, will you please bring resolution TC 28-136 to the floor? Certainly, Madam Chair. Resolution TC 28-136, be it resolved that Preston Merritt of 136 North Stowe Place is hereby reappointed as a member of the Trumbull Day Commission for a term extending to September 1, 2025. Thank you. And a second, please. Mike Miller, second. Thank you. Committee report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Preston Merritt of 136 North Stowe Place was present and <coughs> believed his party affiliation is Democrat. He likes the people he serves with and they all do a great job. Ms. Glasser Ornstein noted that she had served with Mr. Merritt and Mr. Uh, Ruspo. They both do a great job and she is happy to serve with them. Ms. McGannon stated she is the clerk of the commission and they could not do Trumbull Day without them. Ms. Katsky noted Mr. Merritt is listed as unaffiliated. She will check the list and report back at the full council meeting. 
vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Uh, does Ms. Katsky want to speak? Yes, uh, this is Cindy Katsky. Um, I did check with the registrar's office and um, Mr. Merritt is indeed a registered unaffiliated voter. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, can we pass this by unanimous consent as well? Yes, okay, thank you. All right. Um, Councilman Sinto, could you please bring resolution TC 28-137 to the floor, please? Yes, Madam Chairman, would you say 137? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, okay, thank you, hang on. Mm -hmm. Resolution be resolved that Joseph Rapazzo, if I'm saying that correctly, of 25 Muspa, Muspa sorry, Muspa, that's okay. Muspa, <laughs> of 25 Moose Hill Road is hereby appointed as a member of the Trumbull Day Commission for a term extending to September 1st, 2025. Thank you. Do we have a second? Mike Miller, second. Thank you. Committee report, please. Joseph Ruspo of 25 Moose Hill Road was president. He has served on the commission for 10 years. He hopes to have a better 2021 Trumbull Day than 2020. Vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Uh, first selectman to Soro extended a gratitude to all those being appointed to a board or a commission. It is great to serve and she appre appreciates them. We're all hoping Trumbull Day will happen this year. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, can we pass this by unanimous, unanimous consent as well, please? Okay, thank you. Councilman Marsh, will you please bring resolution TC 28-138 to the floor, please? Certainly, resolution TC 28-138, be it resolved that the reappointment by the first selectman of Richard Gerard of 18 Firehouse Road as a member of the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission for a term extending to the first Monday of December, 2023, B and the same is hereby approved. Thank you. Can we have a second, please? Second, second. Ashley Gadiano. Thank you. Committee report, please. Richard Gerard of 18 Fire <coughs> Road was present and stated the commission works very well together and he enjoys serving and has worked with the commission for many years. Um, I'll add, not noted here, but he was a Democrat. Vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Any further discussion? If there is none, I'd like to have this also be approved by unanimous consent. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Valente, will you please bring resolution TC 28-139 to the floor, please? Absolutely. Resolution TC 28-139, be it resolved that the reappointment by the first selectman of Tony Silver of 43 Stag Lane as the Planning and Zoning Commission representative on the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission for a term extending to the first Monday of December, 2023, being the same is hereby approved. Thank you. May I have a second, please? Support, on second. Thank you. Committee report, please. Tony Silver of 43 Stag Lane was present and indicated the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission does an incredible job protecting the wetlands and watercourses. It is a vital job for the community and they are passionate about it. This position connects the dots to planning and zoning. I'll add that he indicated his party affiliation as Democrat. Vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to know if we can also pass this by unanimous consent. Yes, great, thank you. Councilman Miller, will you please bring resolution TC 28-140 to the floor, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Resolution TC 28-140, be it resolved that Ashley Gaudiano of 56 Frederick Street, being the same is hereby appointed as a town council representative on the police station building committee. Thank I'll you. second Joanne Glasser Orenstein. Thank you. Committee report. 
Ashley Gadiano of 56 Frederick Street was present and indicated her party affiliation as Democrat. The committee has done a great job and currently needs someone. She's happy to serve. Vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to know if we can approve this by unanimous consent as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Shively, will you please bring resolution TC 28-141 to the floor, please? Certainly, Madam Chair. Oh, just almost lost my place. There we go. Resolution TC 28-141, be it resolved that the Trumbull Town Council rules and procedure adopted on December 3rd, 2019, and as amended June 1st, 2020, are further amended in rule number four, entitled Notice of Meetings by Deletion of the Term Business Days and Substitution of the Term Calendar Days as they appear in said rule. Full amendment attached. Thank you. May I have a second, please? Bruce Alstein, second. Thank you. Committee report. Attorney Shopik explained the charter provides notice as calendar days. This resolution brings the town council rules of procedure into compliance with the charter. Vote motion carried by unanimous consent. Thank you. Um, Attorney Shopik, would you like to say anything in response to the resolution? I think uh, uh, Mr. Elstein has uh, encapsulated the uh, entire uh, situation, so there's nothing more to say. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Madam Chair, uh, Councilman Massaro. <clears throat> yes, Councilman Massaro. I'm intimately familiar with the challenge presented to the chair, the clerk, and the administration in getting a agenda together uh, under the business day rule that we have been operating on for a number of years. Um, I was opposed to this charter change, reducing the time period to calendar days um, because council people get the, in, uh, the information on agendas uh, in a shorter time period under the new proposed rule and the public uh, gets notice uh, much later uh, than using the business day rule. So I will not support the rule change. Uh, we do not have to adopt the calendar day um, provision of the new charter because the business day is a more stringent uh, rule. It's not a lesser rule. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, will the clerk have a roll call vote, please? Bill Mecca? <clears throat> yes. Martin Miller? Yes. Donna Sidel? No. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? No. Keith, um, Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? No. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Rosasco Schwartz? No. Joanne Glasser Orenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? No. Patricia Borgeson? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you. And uh, Councilman Elstein, thank you very much for all your committee reports this evening. Um, and now I will ask uh, Councilman Paulson to bring resolution TC 28-142 to the floor, please. With pleasure. Madam Chair, <clears throat> uh, resolution TC 28-142, be it resolved that the five-year capital plan is hereby approved. Thank you, may I have a second, please? Second, Joanne Glasser-Einstein. Thank you, committee report, please. 
This is Kevin Shively. Attorney Shopik gave a brief overview. The plan includes capital projects that are typically bonded and puts the projects in order to move forward to underwrite the funds and to qualify for grants. The first year is the current year. The subsequent four years can change. The plan isn't a bond authorization and doesn't encumber funds. And with that, Madam Chair, uh, the rest of the minutes are about five more pages. Um, and so I would suggest that that uh, we entertain a motion to uh, waive the reading of the rest of the minutes. So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, any further discussion? Need a vote on that, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. All right, we'd like to vote on that. Uh, roll call vote, please, by the clerk. Bill Mecca. Yes. Michael Miller. Yes. Donna Sidel. No. Mary Isaac. Yes. Tony Sinto. Are we voting on waiving the minutes or voting yes. on the resolution? Waiving the minutes. Waiving the minutes. Uh, yes. Keith, um, Carol Hans. Yes. Kevin Shively. Yes. Thomas Whitmore. Yes. Nicole Satin. Yes. Jason Marsh. We'll come back to Jason. Carl Massaro. Yes. Eric Madam Paulson. Chair, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. I indicated a yes. I didn't. I don't know if it was heard. No, I was. I did. Could not hear you. Thank you. Eric Paulson. Yes. Gloria Zosko Schwartz. Yes. Joanne Glasser Orenstein. Yes. Steve Lemoyne? Yes. Patricia Borgeson? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? Yes. Margaret, that should be a yes for me. I, I didn't realize what I was, I was voting on the wrong thing, so yes for me. Very good, I'll change that, thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you, okay. Now, is there any further discussion on the five-year capital plan? Uh, a I, yes, Dawn, this is Tony, if you don't mind, or somebody okay. else wants to go first. Go ahead, Councilman Pinto. Yes, thank you. I have a yeah. question for, I see Maria's here. Um, hi, Maria. Um, my question is, and I think I've asked this before, um, I just wanna know how much debt we're retiring this year how much debt we spent, and I don't, I don't know how much we're going to spend, so uh, I don't expect you to know that, but at least the first two. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Maria Pirates, Director of Finance. Um, we approximately uh, spent $12 million a year. We pay out, pay out a debt of $12 million, and we borrow between seven and 10 million a year. Uh, just keep in mind, this is a no, not an authorization to bond. It's only a capital plan, five-year plan, uh, which is just a vision of the town of projects that will be bonded uh, at a later time. Uh, the next month, we'll probably be going to the town council, uh, board of finance, and then the town council for approval for the one-year plan, a uh, bonding plan. And at that time, uh, both the Board of Finance and Town Council as an option to approve projects or deny projects. Okay, so out of the out of the 12 million that's retiring, hypothetically, if that's what it usually, usually is, yes. how much have we expended so far this year? Last, we normally don't bond until the project is completed. So yeah, whatever- Yeah, well, we bonded for the property. Is that on this year or is that on the year before? This is uh, in 2020. Correct. That was so 2020. So this is still this is July 1st to July 1st. Correct. Th this is calendar year, so it'll be January 1st. This January. Right. So, but last year, how? So, but this town budget goes July 1st to July 30 to June 31st. June 30. Correct. Correct. So, in this calendar year so far on the town budget, <laughs> how much should we bond already? We bonded the 7 million and I believe it was 10 million in August. 
So that's 17 million we bonded this year so far. Correct. And we're going to put out another bond for possibly for repairs and whatnot that way it's in the pack capital plan keep, correct? keep in mind the 10 million that we bonded in august those projects have already been completed they were completed and uh, we normally only bond when the projects are completed uh, so this next month we'll go for an authorization that does not mean that we'll be bonding the full amount okay we, again we probably will do notes first for a year and then bond permanent borrow after the project is completed. Okay, so last question. Thanks, Marin, so far for the information. Uh, so, so far in this fiscal year, we bonded 17 million. Correct. Okay, thanks, thanks very much. Sure. I appreciate it, Marin, thanks very much. Sure. Any further discussion? I know um, uh, George Estrada had a few comments to make for this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Council, for allowing me to address you this evening. Uh, we, uh, at the meeting the other night, um, we suggested, I made a suggestion, first of all, the Long Hill Administration Building um, at the Board of Education is, uh, after having done a walkthrough there a couple of times this summer, um, is in dire need of uh, some, some improvements. Uh, but before you really can get into any improvements, you have to do the assessments and, so that you can actually create a, um, a financial plan and a budget to request um, for, for support. So um, what I would like to suggest that the council um, entertains is the, in a, a line item um, that would be on the um, from discussions the other night and Dan Chopik can give more detail on this. Uh, I believe it would be bonded on the town side, not the Board of Ed side, for $30,000 to bring on licensed professional to do an evaluation of the roofing system at the Long Hill uh, building. And, and then after that, take a look at the HVAC system. Uh, both of those are uh, beyond uh, end of life, uh, but, to be honest with you, they have they have some uh, water penetration issues there, and uh, the the HVAC system there is very very antiquated. So I would suggest that the council um, considers um, providing a thirty thousand dollar line item to support um, those evaluations of Long Hill um, administration building. To put in context, if I may, one other thing. We, we're doing something similar on the town side of Town Hall. Uh, in the 2020 bond, there was a $25,000 line item, um, and we are preparing bids so that we can uh, bring someone on to do something similar uh, with the HVAC system in Town Hall, because currently that we have certain portions of that that is at end of life also. Um, the control system there is, is a, um, is a very antiquated system that does not allow for remote adjustments. So whenever there is a, um, a meeting or, or a challenge with the environment within the building, it requires someone to actually come in most of the times um, on overtime to respond to those. Um, and since that building is so, used so often, uh, one of the improvements that we're, we, we will do there is establish a control system with, that will become basically the platform that we will, in time, migrate all of the town buildings to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any, so would you like to add that under town hall under design and replacement of HB? AC control system, I would uh, the 30,000 to the 350,000 that's already on there? I would suggest that, Madam Chair. Okay, thanks. Madam Chair, do you want a motion for that now or do you want to hold on those? This is Ashley Gadigano. Thank you. Um, I believe, um, Attorney Shopik, can we wait until the end and make one final approval or- um, Are you, you know, 
this is Dan Shopik. Uh, you can you can do that if if certainly if uh, any money anybody on the council wants to divide the question, uh, they certainly have a right to do that. So you're not you're not obligated to vote everything up or everything down. Uh, however, if um, so, whatever for your own um, your, for your purposes going through the meeting. If it's easier to vote on each thing as it comes, you can do it that way. Otherwise, you can do it as one motion uh, later on, or you could decide if, if people, if you want to pull out, let's say there's one item that uh, there is division on, pull that item out, vote on everything else as one, and then take the item that there's a question about. Okay. It's, it's uh, either, either or, or any. Okay. Hey, Dawn, this is, this that's is why Tony. That's why you're the chair. <laughs> hey, Dawn, this is Tony. I have a question for Mr. Estrada. Yes, yes. I just want uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Estrada. I just have a question. Um, is this to fix the problem or is to do an evaluation of the problem? I just want to clarify that. This is to do an evaluation. Um, both the roofing system and the HVAC system there need to have a professional assessment and a plan developed that would allow us to um, bid accurately for the improvements. Okay. It's just that buildings. I, I think that in, it, that buildings uh, is a, a use of life is over. It's it is uh, it's the building it certainly can use a lot of of, of uh, help. Um, but I my my assumption is that in the foreseeable future, I, I, I don't see a replacement of that building. So making that building um, a better environment for all, all those that work there and the parents um, community that visit the building, I think would be an important step. Has the parking lot ever been fixed? That, that has also been evaluated this summer. Um, that will become a more long-term plan, but most important right now, I think is more the envelope of the building and the mm -hmm. Um, the environment within the building uh, than, the, than the pavement. It certainly can use a, a drainage and pavement improvement around that property also. But it's, I, I, I thought, I think that it's being prudent, I, I thought it would be more prudent not to bring large expenditure like that um, uh, from, from me at this time it, it, and address more of the quality of life of those that reside in that building. Uh, thanks very much, appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, any other discussion items? Madam Chair, I've got a couple more. Do you want me to just do all of them? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the, there is one that we're actually looking to just move uh, the, the transfer station. We had a line item for $125,000. Uh, it's page 17 within the, the documents that you have been provided. Uh, we would like to um, ask for that one that line item to be moved from 2021 to 2022. Uh, the reason for that being, um, we want to refresh the, the the backup that we had on that is a few years old, and we want to bring more accurate information uh, next time to the council for consideration. Uh, I, I I don't want to ask you for something and later. Um, realize that that previous estimates uh, that others had done were either uh, inflated or, or under budget or, or okay. over. I have the amount is 140,000 on the capital plan for 2021 for the roof replacement of the transfer station. So That's we're moving it. that to um, 2022, correct? Yes, yes okay. please. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, the uh, the economic uh, our economic development director Rena Bacalar uh, and I have been working with MetroCog, which is the regional planning agency, on several uh, projects. And today we had um, a a a second meeting. Uh, Chief Lombardo attended that, as well as others. Uh, and the it's it's a result of concern that the first selectman has expressed over the traffic safety and pedestrian traffic and pedestrian safety at the intersection of Daniels Farm and White Plains. Uh, the, new, the new development obviously has been, um, 
extremely successful. Um, and as a result, the traffic in that area has really um, elevated. There, there was a, a, a pretty significant bump in uh, traffic accidents there. Um, just after that facility had, um, had opened, it has subsided. Obviously, people have become familiar with the traffic and are more cautious approaching, but still there have been quite a few near misses there um, uh, recently, um, as a matter of fact. And uh, as a result, the First Selectman had asked us to explore grant funding that might be possible to support improvements at that intersection. That's, that's a state road intersection, both of them. Uh, and the, what we, um, what we uh, would like to ask after our meeting today with the Metrocog is for a line item, because as you have done in the past, having a um, financial commitment from the town is what facilitates many times uh, major grant um, support from a from state and federal. We will be pursuing, uh, it appears to be a federal uh, transportation grant for that intersection. The, the project could potentially be a two to $3 million project um, and they would, they would uh, support that, the, um, the majority of that. So what we would like to ask is a $500,000 line item. We will not be bonding this. This is a placeholder on our, um, on our capital plan right now. Um, as the plan evolves and it's defined and the engineers take a closer look at it with Metro Cogs resources, uh, we, will, we will know a, a, a more accurate number of what is needed there. But normally it's a 20 to 25% match from a community and the remainder comes through the grant. So um, we're, we would like to ask the council to consider adding to the capital plan for 2022 um, $500,000 line item, which will then allow us to move forward with meetings that we have scheduled next week uh, to further this with Metrocog uh, and then pursue a preliminary application that uh, Rena Bacalar would be preparing uh, with, with the support of Metrocog for early February. And if we are approved there, it would move forward for a full grant application due in April. So this is a new line item, correct? Yes, Madam Under Chair. economic development, uh, White Plains Road correct. and Daniels Farm Road intersection. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I have one final one, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Um, yes. Dawn, this is, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Tony. Okay. Can I ask Mr. Estrada yes. a question about the uh, intersection? Of course. Yes. If you don't mind. Did you have, just curious because um, you are right, it's kind of a little hectic over there. Do you have any ideas on how to adjust it? Or are you gonna wait for uh, someone to come in and say, hey, we're gonna do an evaluation, we're gonna check it out. Or do you have some kind of, because that's a big intersection, there's already lights there. So do you have any suggestions just well, to tell us? In, you know, in, just that's all. What I can tell you in looking at it and discussing it with some of the engineers, uh, the, the signalization, um, it, it certainly can be upgraded. Uh, crosswalk improvement and, and uh, signalization also for pedestrian safety. Uh, what would be very difficult is changing grades. You kind of inherit that steep uh, dip there going up Daniels Farm. So that, that will not be something that would be easily adjusted without affecting properties, adjacent properties. So it will be more in the signalization uh, and signage that would be um, the improvements and some, yeah. and, and primarily the, the sequencing of that because there are other lights nearby and tying in turn lanes that would allow for queuing of traffic and and uh, and safely exchanging uh, direction. Yeah, I agree with you. I just I was because um doing working with the state kind of works really slow sometimes. <laughs> yes, and, and I remember once it took five years to get a light put in. Absolutely. So I was just wondering if it's something that could be done, you know, by signal changes and stuff that's simpler. So it doesn't take as long since it's so hectic over there now, that's all. We have been in discussion with uh, the state already uh, for several months on the possibility of them doing some adjustments and adding some turn signalization. Uh, but we're on a dual track. We're, we're pursuing both 
a full signalization of that intersection there of two state roads um, and continuing the conversations with them on some of the existing infrastructure there and what might be able to be improved. All right, so I'm super at this uh He's dealing with faster the better in that situation. Uh, thanks, George. Thanks, Mr. Estrada. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thompson. If I could just make one point to Tony's question. The signals there, the signalization, the actual light fixtures there are extremely old. So they don't have the capacity to add arrows and other things mm -hmm. to really make the traffic flow better. So there needs to be a complete replacement of all of the lights that come together um, on each of the, the roadways there um, in order to improve things. That's one of the issues, the age of the signals and the capacity of the existing signals. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, for Selectman Tesoro. Yes. Uh, Rena, would you mind just uh, taking a moment and talk about the changes that the landlord made in the parking lot itself to um, help with the traffic inside that, uh, that new plaza there? Sure. Um, Rob Labrandi, our town planner, after we have a team that's been meeting on Trumbull Center to talk about various improvements and investments in the area. So um, worked with the landlord to restripe the um, specific lanes that come into the drive through that is the Starbucks Avenue drive through um, that made a big improvement. Uh, we all they also installed signage to better direct car as they access the parking lot um, to really explain to them how the lanes of traffic work and where the drive through lanes are. And that's been very helpful um, in terms of getting people maneuvering through, through well. So the landlords have cooperated with improvements um, as well as I believe um, the public works folks have blocked off the other crosswalk in the area and we're directing people to the main crosswalks and folks will probably remember the trail that's the trail connector that's going in that Bill Maurer is um, quarterbacking. Um, that will improve all of the crosswalk signalization. Right now, we don't have those countdown crosswalks and that kind of thing. There are more modern um, ADA compliant crosswalk type signalization. So that's part of the actual trail program. So this project that George and I are working on and Chief Lombardo to resignalize the whole intersection and make other the flow of traffic into the area. And we are applying for federal CMAC congestion mitigation air quality funding through through the feds. It passes through the state and through our metropolitan planning organizations. So we have a way to go, but this is early steps. And to George's point, it's absolutely critical that we have something in the capital plan that acknowledges this project and the importance of it to our community. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else, George? Yeah, um, I, yep. Yes, I have one last one, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I would I would ask that the council consider adding to the capital plan uh, a program for digitizing documents uh, in town, uh, uh, town, uh, town, town hall. hall, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. We, I think everyone recognizes the constraints that our current uh, facility has. And as you navigate through the offices there, what is very, what was evident to me immediately was the, the unbelievable um, level of uh, paper that we, you know, in, in most cases are required to to hold for uh, long periods of time. Uh, digitizing uh, is a is a program that uh, could never happen soon enough. Um, and in most most organizations, it seems to be something that gets put on the back burner uh, because it just doesn't seem to be that important for, for the expenditure. Um, however, I could tell you that it, it, you know, we are, we have maxed out um, areas within certain offices in town hall. Um, the continuation of storage of documents is going to become a challenge over uh, the years to come. So drawing a line in the sand where we begin to digitize what is coming in um, and we, we go to a paperless um, 
process. And, at, and then at the same time, beginning to digitize some of our archival uh, information, which will then also in turn make it available for the community to easily access, as well as we had, a, um, we were fortunate that our operations transitioned almost seamlessly to, um, to a remote process when, this, when the pandemic hit us last year. Uh, and, and one of the very fortunate things uh, that had occurred previously was the beginning of requesting digital documents within some of the permitting areas, uh, uh, the offices that, that are involved in permitting. And that allowed us to go remote instantly within a couple of days, we were able to transition and really not lose a beat in doing so. Um, we had we had we had a teaching it was a bit of a teaching curve for people to just operate a little bit differently that were coming to do this with us, but we were able to respond to them very very um, adequately um, remotely. So the the request would be for within the town hall um, section of the capital um, plan a a line for it in twenty twenty one for digitizing. Um, transitioning the initial transitioning phase and digitizing of $100,000. Can we phase that in or is that at the total cost? That is- Would you uh, break it up a year for a few years or? Dimitri, you are on here, right? Uh, Dimitri has done some research, has done the research on this. Can you give us a little bit more depth, Dimitri? Hope so. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, wonderful. Good evening, everybody. Uh, essentially, the concept is to make everything within the town a paperless system. And, and the sooner you actually can do that, you're crossing over from every single department uh, instantaneously. We already started to do that uh, in the town clerk's office because it was a requirement. Uh, but the sooner you can integrate every single department and their documentation into one uh, seamless system, the sooner you're actually functional. So how do you choose one department over another, uh, the public works department over the building department, over finance or whomever? So the, the concept is right now to look at a million pages and we could put out to, uh, to bid a digitizing service for, for just that. Uh, current pricing out there is between eight cents and 12 cents a page, depending on the size of the document you're scanning. So, you know, initially we're looking at straight up uh, simple paper documents, uh, uh, pages, not uh, full prints or anything of that nature. Um, sorry, I'm getting feedback. Um, so the, the idea is to try to get that over and done with, but more importantly, uh, we have an opportunity and have actually for a couple of years, Metro Cog actually has a grant program uh, for a laser fiche system, which would allow, it would really would be the program where you could access all that data and it's free. It's free for quite a few years moving forward. So all we have to do is essentially create the documents put it into the system and we are in a remote world. Um, that has amazing applications even for just how we work in town. Uh, we face a lot of problems in terms of how we want to uh, lay out our buildings and what money we're putting into buildings. And well, we really don't know what that looks like moving into the future. The sooner we're able to have the flexibility to go remote without having to go run through files, uh, the, the sooner we're able to do that. So it's a, it's, it's a concept, I think, as time has come. Hey, hey, hey Dawn, this is Tony Since I got a question for, um, for them. Um, you're going to digitize all this stuff. Or where are you going to put, where are you going to, do you have new servers coming for this? Can the current servers handle all the new documentation, digitized documentation? Do you have new storage places for this? New racks? Actually, is this any, is, is, um, has the storage units been purchased? You're talking about terabytes of information. I think I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to ask for my friend, uh, Mr. Chin. Would you like to uh, give a little information on that, sir? Sure. So the Laserfish program is currently hosted at 
um, the Greater Richard Regional Council. Um, so all of that's in the cloud and um, the documents would be in, in their cloud server. So why wouldn't we, why would you wanna have our documents on the Bridgeport Regional Business Council? So they, they are building the laser fish system for all of the, the, all of the region to use mm -hmm. and they can segregate the data so that you know, Shelton sees their piece, Bridgeport sees their piece, Trumbull sees their piece. Doesn't sound too secure to me, Bill. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. I, 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 would, I would highly recommend you have your own storage units on your own location and keep it separate from everybody else's. I, I haven't, having our information in, in a cloud in, in a different location isn't really smart. Bill, excuse me, this is first selection to Soro. Bill, isn't that through Metricog? Yes, it is. <coughs> you should all have your own storage units at your own locations and not share it with anybody else, especially if it's especially if it's sensitive town information. That's just my opinion, Bill. I would I wouldn't do it that way, but I, I would the cloud isn't safe. You can't say it is. It's certainly probably safer to have it on premises, but the cloud is certainly safe enough with um, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and all those major companies using it. Well, as long as you, as, long as you think so, Bill. So well, I don't, but that's okay. Thanks. Through the chair. Yes, uh, Councilman Miller. This is Mike Miller. Um, I guess the question I would really have for Mr. Paris or Mr. Chin is that when are you talking about this as an initial? bonding exercise because of the sheer number of documents, wouldn't this be more of an operational expense because this would be ongoing as more documents are scanned through the years, correct? Well, we're currently scanning our, our current documentation as much as we can. So we're up to date uh, or moving forward where we're running into difficulty and where we, uh, we have the backlogs of catalogs is essentially, I don't know what the magic date was, Bill, you know, uh, but anything that we need for historic records or going back into history, essentially, uh, which we do all the time. Uh, we just don't have the ability to do that. And we're literally rummaging through uh, <laughs> file cabinets uh, to do so. And it requires space and requires personnel to physically be uh, in, a, in, a, in a space at a given time to actually do those searches manually. Understood. It just this isn't something we would typically include in the capital plan. Well, you know, and that's and that's probably why it hasn't happened to date because I don't think it actually has been considered as uh, something that would be defined that way. I think we 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 generally get ourselves boxed in with the capital plan is something that you build or otherwise. Well, this is not just the the is not technology, and I know that that has a, an expiration point and may not reach meet the criteria of the the generalized definition. Um, it it's it's once it's digitized, it's forever. It's the the record of the town of Trumbull in a form that is not on part in, in simple terms. Wherever we go from there, that goes with us, and we are able to. To, to Mr. Sinto's point, if we choose to host that or we want to buy racks or have our own storage data, that digitized information will then go into wherever it's going. Um, but right now it's a paper file. Um, and this has been the opportunity to really see the deficits in the paper file and where the opportunities lie for just operations in general to sort of break free of the conventional office space uh, and how we do business uh, as a community with our records. Understood, and I actually am in favor of digitizing our records. It seems to me that would be something we would take up on a town-wide basis in general, including with the Board of Ed, which must have digital <coughs> files as any of, of the other departments in town, so. Mm. I can, I can tell you, I can, having been um, a, a, the vice president of facilities at the University of Bridgeport, um, one of the things that we struggled through and we were working towards was exactly this, because the overwhelming volume of paper and the paperless society that we all supposedly live in is just unbelievable. <clears throat> so 
Um, I'm, I'm I, the, I would propose one additional um, risk that we currently have is God forbid anything happens, uh, that there was ever a fire, everything would be lost. That's really, so this is in addition to facilitating access and streamlining uh, operations, it is, it's also an insurance policy that we're preserving the documents that we, that we need going forward. Through the chair. Yes, Councilman Gordiano. Okay. Thank you, Ashley Gordiano. Um, just real quick, do we know what date we have documents digitized back to? No, okay. I didn't know if we were talking five years, ten years, twenty years. No. Well, I believe we address it this issue on the uh, that just came up today. I was not aware that we're putting this on the capital plan. Uh, since I was away, I didn't, I didn't get this information. Uh, but I do believe that we do need this uh, digitizing all our records. I know there's a volume in every department. However, I do not think it should be a capital item. It shouldn't be bonded. Um, I do think it should be in an operating budget over several years. Obviously, we can't do it all in one year. And I know that Metro Cog is also um, assisting the town with some of the uh, scanning and digitizing of the town clerk's office. So there may be opportunities for us to get some additional funding from MetroCog to do this project. Just my thought. Madam Chair, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad uh, that uh, Ms. Pyrus chimed in with that information because that answers the, the question I was about to ask, that very question of I, I'm, I also question why we would want to bond this type of expense and, and thinking that it's more operational and, and you answered my question, I believe, and I'd, I'd like to know from anyone who may dispute this that whether or not we could even have digitized everything in one year anyway. And it sounds like uh, from Ms. Pyrus that it would not be possible to do so. And if so, why wouldn't it be an ongoing operational expense spread out over multiple budget years um, rather than, you know, I, I just, I would need some kind of, I would be interested in some kind of explanation why it would need to be bonded as opposed to being an operational expense. Any comments, Dimitri? I, I think I think we should withdraw mm -hmm. if Maria, Maria really is um, the one that we have to take our direction from on this. So if Maria is saying that this is more of an operational, then I, I would, um, I would ask that we remove that request from uh, consideration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. That, that's all that I had. Okay. Any other items for discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman Shively. Uh, and I, I apologize for not identifying myself last time. This is Kevin Shively. Um, I do have a couple of questions uh, for Mr. Morello, um, specific to the uh, some of the things in the uh, request from the Board of Education. One of the things in our, our um, meeting the other night, our committee meeting, uh, that was some question was the actual age of the um, Middlebrooks a roof. It, I know that in the, in the request, it says that the other two roofs, Jane Ryan and Booth Hill, and the Jane Ryan one may be a question as well that we need answered. Uh, being 1991 roofs, and I, I'm, I, I think that may one of Jane Ryan may be incorrect, but it doesn't show any kind of age, and I think that we were going to get maybe that information. Did you did you find out anything through the chair? Uh, I'm asking Mr. Morello. Did you find out anything as as far as the age of the roof at Middlebrook? Yes, um, we did bring in a, an expert. His name is Steve Bethello, and he he did do a report on the three roofs in question. Booth Hill, Jane Ryan, and Middlebrook. Um, as far as Middlebrook, I, and then I'll let Steve speak. Uh, Middlebrook's roof was last replaced in 1991. So and that's then, the same year as Booth Hill. It was listed at as well. 1991. Yes. That's what it, yes. 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 And Steve, did you want to, or Kevin, did you want to? speak further into the roofs now i can have steve uh sure yeah well while well, we're talking about it i mean sure. and i know that we're not actually bonding this right now but it'll help us to to know you know sure. going Just forward a little, more information, a little more information okay uh thank you for having me um 
Paul, John, thank you for, for asking me to come in. Uh, again, my name is Steve Patello with the Garland Company. Um, upon request from Paul and John, I did do evaluations at Jane Ryan, Booth Hill, and Middlebrook. And I don't know for these purposes how, how detailed you want me to get, but I'll start with the good. Um, Jane Ryan uh, is about 55,000 square feet. Um, the roof, we believe, was installed in 2010. Um, Overall, it was in you know decent shape, um, you know for the age. Um, it got good good taper, good slope. Uh, I think that might have been a um, it's a it's a two ply modified. I'm sorry, it's a four ply modified with flood and gravel. So, you know the life expectancy on that. I don't know what the warranty is, but typically it's a you know 15 or 20 year warranty on something like that. Um, Booth Hill, uh, again 30 years old. Um, the majority of it, we believe, was installed in 91. We may have one or two sections that were installed in 97. Um, the total is 56, 000, almost 57,000 square feet. Um, the majority of that is a single ply um, EPDM roof. Um, definitely, you know, showing its age. Um, it has good R value. The R value is about R24 on average. Um, and then you have about 19,000 of a built up roof. The good news on this school is it is just a single roof. So we did core cuts um, actually in the snow. Um, we cleaned it all up and dried it off. Um, but we went up uh, again, a palm request about two weeks ago. Um, the EPDM section um, overall is in good shape. We're, recommend, we're recommending um, that it be restored with a fluid applied restoration system uh, that would offer a, either a 10, 15 or 20 year warranty depending on um, what scope we do. Um, the budget on that for, for the EPDM section is gonna be between 450 and $550,000. Um, the other section um, is the uh, older section. It's got a about a quarter inch tapered perlite insulation. Um, it's a it's a two ply model. It's a two ply built up roof, which is kind of uncommon. Um, we did we went out there. We did core cuts very you know in depth. Um, it has good slope, but the roof itself is only two ply. Typically, when you do that type of a roof, you do four plies. Um, they only did two, but I think they compensated by doing a real thick, heavy flood coat of gravel. Um, that one should be should be re-roofed over. Um, the good news is you have an option to re-roof over that um, as opposed to completely ripping it to the deck, which would add quite a bit to the budget. Um, so the suggestion there is, and all this work meets code, international building code. Um, we would re-roof that. Um, the budget would be 450 to 525 and that would you know, bring a 25 year warranty. Um, the worst of them, unfortunately is, is Middlebrook. Um, <clears throat> that is about 50, almost 58,000 square feet, 30 years old. Um, you have some unique conditions there with the masonry and the through wall counter flashing locations and height. Um, it is a concrete deck, so it's a little bit different. The other two had metal roof decks. This is a concrete deck that is structurally sloped, so that's a good thing. Um, I think you're not experiencing as many leaks on this roof because of that concrete deck. Um, and the fact that it does have a vapor barrier uh, as kind of a temp roof, if you will, uh, at the base. Um, the solution on that one is really to, that has to be removed. Um, infrared scans weren't done this time of year, we can't do those, um, but <clears throat> it, it's, go it's gonna be pretty obvious to me based on what I saw there and the condition of the core cut that is by far the worst roof of all of them. Um, so I'm anticipating you're gonna have a lot of um, water penetration that's sitting in between the deck and the top layer. Um, the option there is to remove it and go back with um, you know, complete new roof. So that'd be a complete tear off. Um, I don't know if I can open it up to questions. I don't know what our time frame is here, but I'm more than willing to, to you know, share any information that I have on these with you. Thank you. Madam, Did you Madam, have a, um, Madam yes, Chairman, uh, I'm Paul Hendrickson, the business manager of the school system. Uh, yes. ba based on Steve's analysis, 
we would like to revise the capital uh, plan. Uh, the roof replacement at Middlebrook would be going from 1.5 million to 1.725 million. And that is an upper limit and not to exceed. The roof replacement at Jane Ryan would go from 1.35 million to 1.6 million. But as Steve indicated, there is flexibility in that and that we could move it to the out years. And uh, uh, based on Steve's uh, presentation, uh, the uh, roof at Booth Hill would go from 1.7, uh, excuse me, 1.3 million to 1.075 million. And Steve, Steve, that agrees with your figures, correct? Yeah, I think it's 1.75. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 1.75. I have a question for attorney Shopik. Can they change their capital? Can we change the capital plan from the Board of Ed at this point? I'm muting myself and coming, coming That's okay. back online. Uh, yeah, I think you've, you've changed other things. You took you, you changed George's uh, uh, plan. I think this is this would be the time to do it. Um, because the Board of Ed voted on their plan and well, we didn't been, change. It, has, it hasn't been approved by the Board of Ed. That's a different question. Yeah. Uh, Would the Board of Ed have to approve their section? And then, because I, I don't think we can uh, uh, change their numbers if they've approved their plan and then present I, I, I it I hear to you. Us. I, I hear you. I think you're right. Okay. But you, you approve the projects. Uh, we we approve the projects. You, you approve the amounts, don't you? Well, I'm not sure what what I'm not sure what the board approved. Uh, do you have their minutes? Not with me. Um, but I they guess approved. I mean, I'm sorry. This is Mark. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Yeah, certainly, you can move it. Move it if it's a question of moving it out to a to a subsequent year. I don't. I don't think that's. That should be problematic. Uh, I think if you're, you, you know, you 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 basically have the amounts in there as placeholders in any event. So, if the, um, I think you you probably just have to leave the amounts as as they are. You could reduce okay. the amounts if if the, uh, but again, I I think if if it's a, if the board has has not, you're you're coming here in saying that this is what the board is recommending and the board hasn't recommended it. So that, that becomes a little bit problematic. Okay. So we can leave the numbers as is, and yeah. then they have to be quoted anyway, right? That has to go out for bid. It's still, and it's still go out, it definitely go out to bid. Yeah. So uh, the- Madam, so Madam we, Chair, excuse me one sec. I do, I do have the minutes to that meeting. Okay, yes. Um, do you want me to read them? It's a short it's a couple paragraphs. Certainly, go ahead. Um, facilities Supervisor John Morello, <clears throat> sorry, I have not very much light here. So presented the proposed capital improvement for the calendar years 21-25. Mr. Kerr then detailed the proposed improvements for 21 for each TPS building and the board discussed each improvement and the associated cost. It was moved by Palo and second by Gallo to add 35,000 for design of the Trumbull High School weight room to the capital request for the fiscal year 21. The capital request total for 21 changes from 7,184,000 to 7,219,000. Vote all in favor. It was moved by Kerr and second by Norcell to defer the Middlebrook and roof replacement from 21 to 22. Vote in favor, Kerr against Gallo and Petiti, Timpanelli, Ward, Norsell, Palo, motion fails. It was moved by Ward and seconded by Gallo to approve the proposed five-year capital plan as presented. Vote all in favor. Okay. So I would leave it as is. I would not, since the Board of Ed 
voted on those numbers and those figures, we would leave them as is, as, as placeholders. Dan Shopik, again, as town attorney, I think it's fair to say that, um, yes, you, I would leave, leave them as is, but uh, I would give, uh, uh, if, if the board comes back later and says, you know, the number was really what was presented here tonight, I don't think that uh, the town council would uh, say that's a surprise. So, um, you know, when it goes out to bid, you'll, okay. you'll see what the numbers are. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. I would also just Council point out, I mean, especially, or, I mean, this is Kevin Shively. Um, there was also one other discrepancy um, while we're talking about, and, and especially if the board is going to revisit any of this, uh, the Board of Ed, um, for the bus garage and where in the supporting documents where they, they I, and I believe someone may have said that they actually voted on the amount and that line item is $30,000, whereas in the, uh, the plan that was submitted to us, it's actually $65,000, which I believe is actually the correct amount. And so if they are going to be making any revisions, perhaps they'd want to look at that and confirm and make sure that they're presenting that, that figure correctly as well. Thank you. Through the chair, this is Ashley Gadiano. Yes. I just have a quick point of clarification while we still have um, Steve on the call here. Um, the Middlebrook roof is 30 years old. How old was the Jane Ryan and how old is Booth Hill? Because they're all in the 2021 capital plan as opposed yeah, the, to bumping them out. The Booth Hill, uh, the majority of the roof is 30 years old, okay. 1991 install. And Middle Middlebrook was 1991. Um, Jane Ryan, we believe, is 2010. Okay. That just seems, um, I mean, I know nothing about roofs, obviously, other than the roof on my house, but it seems like that might not need to be a 2021 item, that that might be able to be pushed out as opposed to Middlebrook, which obviously seems slightly more urgent. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would focus on uh, Booth Hill and, and Middlebrook uh, for, for 2021, for sure. Uh -huh. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here so late too. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Superintendent, um, some, some, did you have a, a statement? Did you want to uh, say something? I know that it came up and you were going to say something. Did you want to add some? No, I'm good. Thank you. I was going to talk about, but but Dan clarified things and we're all set. But thank You're okay? you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? This is one quickie. Mary. It's, oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. Uh, uh, Mary Isaac. Isaac. Um, uh, Maria, quick question for you. You may or may not know this. Um, I had asked Mr. Morella. Uh, the Daniels Farm and the five-year plan that we approved last year, Daniels Farm Asbestos was in it, um, but that was not uh, done this past year. Um, the thought was that perhaps it was done the year before and it was pulled out. I'm just not sure if you if you know that we'd approved it in the five for forty-five thousand or forty thousand. Do you know what if that was, was done it? in 2019 for Daniels Farm Asbestos? I, I am not. I'm not sure. I'd have to check it. Yeah, I couldn't, I, of course, I could not locate my one year plan. So, so was it approved the, two years ago? It was, it was, we had it in our five year, approved in the five year when we just approved last year's plan. I'm not sure if it was pulled out because perhaps it was already done. So, it didn't appear in this year's um, funding approval. Well, so I don't know if it was done perhaps in 2019 or just pulled. If it was in last year's capital plan, and if it came to the board for a bond resolution, then it was either done or in progress. I would have to check. I'll check last year's uh, bond resolution and see if that project was started. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Maria, do you have updated totals? for what we've discussed this evening? Uh, the only items I, I see that we added, and I could be wrong, was the 30,000 for the um, Long Hill yep. and the 500,000 for the Daniels Farm and White Plains Road. 
Is that correct? Um, yes, they withdrew the 100,000. We're not adding the 100,000. Right. right, they took that off. Right. And they moved the 140,000 from 2021 to 2022. Right, but the total right. would not change. Only the individual years will change. If you just want the total, the total is 163,528,586. Which includes the thirty thousand and five hundred thousand. Okay. We can update the schedule and forward it to the council after the meeting next. Okay. Tomorrow, that would be next great. Day. All right. Any further discussion? Can Can I make a, a comment? To um, I have to clarify something to Tony. Yes. So only the, the seven million for the Hardy Lane property, it was only a note. We have, I believe it's nine months to bond it. So right now it's only a note. So no payments are due on that. Um, no, only interest. Well, uh, okay. My only question is then how, what, how is the, the um, property transfer completed? With the proper word, I mean the proper terminology. We, we borrow the money. It's a short-term borrowing, though. Okay, you still borrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any further discussion? I have a question for Dimitri. Yes, Councilman Isaac. Thank you. Sure to share. Um, Dimitri, I know that um, I checked with Michelle on the senior center and the seniors probably aren't going to be going back as quickly um, as say the school kids would be just because of age and safety and everything like that. I do realize you are planning on perhaps using that as recreation space, the, um, the large event room. Uh, would that work for the numbers that you have in there to still have those, those units that we, that, you know, the standalone units? or it just doesn't get cool enough, or how would that work space-wise? I just am curious since we're still thinking, perhaps are we doing a new senior center when? I know there's a lot of other things on the table there though. Well, the, the, the real issue with that building or any of the buildings that we have is what kind of functionality can we get out of them uh, at a given point with the equipment that we have? Most of our buildings are failing as you well know, and the senior center is certainly top on the list. The likelihood of the senior center being rebuilt, take your best guess. How many years out would you actually see a new structure? So between today and that day, whenever it is, uh, or if it is, maybe there'll be a change in plan somewhere down the road and there'll be a complete rehab of the senior center. We've seen those 180 degree switches as well. In the interim, we have uh, objects that are physically in there. And if you're going to have any type of activities in there, they may keep the room reasonably tempered, but at the same time you can trip over them or fall over them and they're hanging out the windows. They are, a, they are designed as a temporary fix. So philosophically, I think you have to come to the point where you decide whether or not you're gonna keep a building at a reasonably functional level or shutter it or just keep closing in on itself. You're aware that we've had problems in the basement in recent, in recent days. Do we shut it? Do we shutter those rooms off? Do we rip the floors out? Do we no longer use it? It's, it's hard, I can't make that choice, but I think those are incremental expenditures to keeping our facilities operational. Uh, if you let it go, it's either not usable to its fullest capacity, and we certainly need full capacity, and we don't even know if the seniors are gonna get you going back in there. We'd like to think they will, maybe we won't. I can't answer those questions. I wouldn't. I think it's a reasonable investment. We've waited many years to this point. Uh, that's just my opinion. Better call it sweating to the oldies. Okay, thank you. Sure enough. Any further discussion? Any other questions for this evening? So we would need to have a motion, if I'm correct, to accept the capital plan with a new amount of 163 million, uh, 
528,586. Is that correct, Maria? That's correct. Okay, we need a motion to accept that. Um, through the chair, please. Yes. Do we need to make motions? Oh, to, to amend? To amend the plan with the changes. Um, you have an addition of 30K. You have an addition of 500K. You wanted to move the Jane Ryan roof to another year. You didn't specify <coughs> which year. And the transfer station 140,000 was going to be moved to 2022, if, if, if my notes are correct. That is correct. So Attorney Shopik, is that correct? We need yeah, to- Ma Madam Chair, yes. Yeah. So, so going back to the question you asked at the beginning, you can take one, one motion to make and take all of those mm -hmm. items as one amendment. And if you, if you have unanimity, that's fine. And then you can vote on the, uh, the uh, resolution as amended which is not unanimity, then you can pull, pull each of the items out. Okay. So can, can we just uh, specify which year we would like to move the Jane Ryan roof to? Madam Chair, I thought we were not touching the Board of Ed plan at this point, or am I, am I confused? I thought we were, had to leave it alone. We can't change the figures. But you can change, you're gonna change the year? That's not Attorney Shopik, yeah. You can, you can change it, you, you, you have the final say on it. So in other words, you, you, I don't think you're, you're bound by what year they had put into the plan, right? The final say is with the council. Okay, then we'll move it to, for this, uh, for this uh, sake, 2022. Thank you. And Thank for, you. For, for further clarification, the Long Hill Admin Building um, HVAC and roof evaluation would be under the town hall. Yes, correct. Will be yes, and Thank under 2021. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So then, Madam Chair, I, I guess uh, this is Kevin Shively. I would make a make a motion to make those changes as outlined um, uh, by uh, Ms. Mastroni. Okay. You want me to outline them? <laughs> Awesome. Um, and just so, and, and um, just one more point of clarification. I believe Mr. Estrada said the five hundred thousand for the Daniels Farm and White Plains would be in twenty twenty two. Yes, twenty twenty two. It's Thank you. just Thank to you. have it on the plan. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. And then do we have a second? Tom Whitmire second. Thank you. Um, and I guess I would have the clerk do a roll call for this, please. Very good. Uh, Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sedell? No. <clears throat> Mary no. Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? Sorry, Did Margaret. You? Sorry, Margaret. Is this for a vote? Is this for a date change? These are for the amendments to the five to the five year plan. For all the amendments, all one vote. All yes. the amendments. That's correct. Okay. No. Point of order, um, if I may, uh, yes. just to clarify, if there is a no vote, are we then going to re-vote on each of the proposed changes? Because it's unclear as to what a no vote is signaling. Are you objecting to the entire capital plan, or just all of the, or a specific change? I'm unclear. Are you asking me? Yes, Mr. Marsh. I'll vote no on everything. Is that is that is that help you out, All right. Madam Chair? I'm, uh, it, it, this is Kevin Shively. It doesn't actually uh, matter unless we have a majority of no. Is isn't that correct on the amendments? That would, that would be correct. If if if, yeah. there, if if I could, this is uh, Dan Shopik again. I guess if there's if, if there is a request by any of the members to segregate one of those items and vote on it separately, I would recommend you do that and then vote on the others together yeah. uh, to, <clears throat> to give the, um, those people their individual, their say in that perhaps they don't want to be shown as being opposed to everything. There might be one thing they want to be opposed to. Uh, so if there are items that somebody wants to pull out, I would recommend that you uh, um, 
divide the question as to that. Uh, through through the chair, I think for the sake of clarity and uh, efficiency, it may be better just to vote on each proposed change as a separate um, uh, motion. Okay, so we'll do that. Do we have um, a motion to withdraw? So I will, I, I will then, this is Kevin Shively, I will withdraw my motion then so that we can um, make a new motion. Okay. And as such, why don't I start with the one that's on top of my list here. Uh, mm -hmm. I will move that we move the $140,000 for the transfer station uh, from 2021 to 2022. Okay, and do we have a second? Mike Miller, second. Okay. And... Any Roll call? Yes, please. Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sadal? No. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? No. Carol Hahn? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? Carl, are you there? We'll come back to Carl. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Rosasco Schwartz? No. Joanna Glasser Orenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? Steve Lemoyne, are you there? No. Thank you. Patricia Borgensen? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Carl's back. I'm back, I'll vote yes. You'll vote yes, thank you, Carl. Okay. Sorry, I missed. Okay. Through the chair. Yes, Councilman Gaudiano. Uh, I'll make a motion to add $500,000 to fiscal year 2022 for the Daniels Farm road work. Thank you, and a second? Tom. Thank you. Okay, roll call, roll call vote. <clears throat> Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sidel? No. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? Yes, on this, this particular line item, yes. Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? Yes. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Vizosko Schwartz? Yes. Joanne Glasser Ornstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? Yes. Patricia Borgensen? <coughs> I'm sorry, somebody was coughing. Yes. Thank you. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? Yes. That motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Now I believe we need a motion to increase um, a design and replacement of HVAC and control system under town hall from 35,000 to 380,000 for the year 2021. So moved, Ashley Gaudiano. Thank you, and second. a second. Joanne Glasser. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sidel? No. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? No. Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? Yes. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Rosasco Schwartz? No. Joanne Glasser Orenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? No. Patricia Borgensen? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? No. 
Okay. Motion passes. Okay. And then I. Now, do we vote on the resolution as amended? Is that I correct? Still have, I think we still have one more motion. Okay. Did we move Jane Ryan to 2022? Nope. We're, we're not going to touch the Board of Ed. Going to leave it alone. Okay. Yes. I thought we could move it to a year. Okay. Well, Thank I, you. You can move Go the ahead. year. You can Pardon? move the year. Okay. Councilman Shively, did you want to make that motion? Uh, yes, I'll make that motion. Okay. And a second, please. I'll second Joan Glasser Ornstein. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sedell? Yes. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? Yes. Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? Yes. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Zosko Schwartz? Yes. Joanne Glasser Orenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? Yes. Patricia Borgensen? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valente? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. And Attorney Shopik, now do I make a motion to accept the total? I think the, the motion has been made and seconded and, and now has been amended. So it's just a question of taking a vote on the motion as amended. And that's it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I need a, mo a motion as no, amended. The, motion. the motion's already there. Oh, just a roll call vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, roll call vote, please. Bill Mecca? Yes. Michael Miller? Yes. Donna Sedell? Yes. Mary Isaac? Yes. Tony Sinto? No. Carol Hans? Yes. Kevin Shively? Yes. Thomas Whitmore? Yes. Nicole Satin? Yes. Jason Marsh? Yes. Carl Massaro? No. Eric Paulson? Yes. Lori Rosasco Schwartz? No. Joanne Glasser Orenstein? Yes. Steve Lemoyne? No. Patricia Borgensen? Yes. Bruce Elstein? Yes. Ashley Gaudiano? Yes. And Lisa Valenti? No. Resolution is adopted. Okay. As amended. Thank you. Okay. Any further business? Madam Chair, uh, Paul Henriksen yes. from the schools. I would just yes. like to know if, based on what happened tonight, uh, we can go out and bid for the roofs and get bids back to see what we may have to bond. Um. And Attorney Shopik, yeah, I'm. We're we're just accepting the capital plan. We're not um, okay. okaying any. There's no there's no money available. But, yeah. Uh, well, they can they can have a bid. We don't have to award the bid when they come back with it. Right. Uh, you're not go, you're not going out on the construction right now. It's a question of design, I would assume. Yeah. No. If I can just kind of chime in, um, I think right now is probably the best time. Um, of the year to bid it and get the most aggressive pricing. So I would highly suggest that we do that. Um, and then, you know, we can always let the contractors know that are bidding it, that it is based upon funding be, being available. See, well, we do it all the time. One other question is whether we need to have a building committee formed to uh, oversee these projects. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, was that Mr. Semmel talking? No. Who was, I couldn't see who was talking. It's our consultant, Steve Bow. Yeah, and I believe that we, we can get a, a quote, right? <laughs> we can't, you have to do an RFQ when it has to go out to bid. That would be through purchasing with uh, Kevin Bova at the town hall. And we would have to set up a building committee for that. I thought building committee was only necessary if you got state reimbursement. 
No. Mm, is is that there, attorney well, Shovick? All, are we sure there is no state reimbursement available for this job? Depending on, if I can, okay. Um, depending on uh, what scope we go with, um, based on the scope of work and the budgets that were submitted, it's not available. Well, I think we. This is something you have to have a discussion offline. I don't think okay. it's not something the council is going to decide. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and in the backup, it did have a mention that there would be some state reimbursement. So that was just a note on the minutes on the backup for Board of Ed. Okay. Okay. All right, and uh, Attorney Shopik, are we good? Are we just waiting for? Uh, do we have to vote on the total now? Or we're all done. You did. You did it. Okay, we're done. So I guess we just need a motion, motion to, to adjourn. <laughs> and a second. Uh, I'll second that, and I would note the time that it's nine thirty-four, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councilman Marsh. Great Have a good evening. Go on job. the pool. Thank <laughs> you, everyone. Have a good evening and a happy and safe New Year. <laughs>